we thank the Lord, amen, that this, is, you know, every service that we have is a Thanksgiving service. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the importance of having a proper mi mindset, to have a, 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 an attitude of gratitude. Amen. Gratitude should be your perpetual attitude. Gratitude, because we've got a lot to be grateful for. God has done a lot for all of us. If you take the time to stop and think, amen. God has done a lot for each one of us. Amen. And you'll find yourself just praising God constantly. Amen. When you're praising God, when you're thanking God, you know, that, that's a major part of praise. Thanksgiving. Amen. amen. Yes, praise is a major part of thanksgiving. Amen. So uh, we're just going to go into the word and just uh, share with you out of the word today. Amen. Um, message con concerning and, and around the, 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 the mindset and the attitude of perpetual thanksgiving. Amen. We shouldn't need anybody to, to pump us up and, and uh, you know, keep stoking us. Come on, come on, come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's praise him. You know, and give thanks. Amen. So uh, I'm, I'm going to start off. We're going to start off in, in uh, First Chronicles. And the... The tenth chapter, I'm going to read, read two or three scriptures uh, in various locations. First, uh, first, what did I, what did I say? Did I say First Chronicles? Uh, first Corinthians. <laughs> first Corinthians. First Corinthians, the tenth chapter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glad, glad I caught that one. Amen. <laughs> the tenth chapter of First Corinthians. And uh, I'm going to start the first verse of the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And it reads, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual food and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day 23,000. Neither let us put Christ to the test, or neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted him. And we were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the earth age or the end of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord God, for all the wonderful instruction that you provided through the scriptures, through the ages. And Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would continue to guide us in the path of righteousness continue to teach us the wisdom of God and help us Lord God to build ourselves up in this most holy faith in Jesus name we pray and our heart and soul says amen, amen. 
Look, look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, neither murmur ye, or don't murmur. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed by the destroyer. You know, we don't want to fall into the, um, into the, uh, the condition that, that the children of Israel fell into. When you stop and think about it, you can understand why God would be displeased with the children of Israel in the wilderness. Uh, the children of Israel were uh, delivered from 400 years of bondage and captivity in Egypt. Amen? And the Bible says that they were delivered as a result of many, many years of much praying from many people that were in bondage in Egypt. They cried. God said, their cry has come up to me. Amen. God said, I'm going down because their cry has come up to me. Uh, they, you know, they were in dire straits. They were, they were in bondage. They were in captivity. They were oppressed. Amen. They were abused. Amen. And they continually groaned in their hearts. Now, when it says that they were crying out to God, it doesn't mean that they was having prayer, uh, prayer meetings, you know, every week and every day and every night, you know. Uh, but if the people were going around in a, in a continual state of prayer, uh, just like we do when we have a crisis in our life. You may not be on your knees, you know, all day, every day, but even as you go about your day, you're in a state of, of prayer and, and your heart is crying out to God. And God sees and hears uh, our prayers. Amen. And he heard the prayers of the children of Israel and God uh, brought them out of bondage. They were in bondage to the Egyptians who were the most powerful nation in the world at that time. And God brought them out with a mighty outstretched hand. Amen. Uh, God performed mighty miracles to convince Pharaoh to listen to his servant Moses, whom God sent to tell Pharaoh, let God's people go. And God brought them out. Amen. And even as they were leaving, you know, God told them to go to their neighbors and, and ask them for some of their jewelry and some of their gold and some of their precious. They just go in and ask. God had set it up that you will not be denied. Amen? Amen? And they started out on their journey into the wilderness. Now, I think sometimes we today, we make the same mistake they made because see what happened from that point on, the children of Israel were, uh, they, were they were delivered. God had delivered them. They, they walked out of town. Amen? You know, there's nothing to duplicate that in the history of the world, that a nation released all of their slaves, released all of their free labor, amen, and just let them walk out of town, amen. And, you know, I, I, I marvel how, how even history uh, makes reference to it. Uh, you know, uh, and I've told you this before, that, that uh, they make note of the deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt in the Quran. It's noted in the Quran. Amen. As a matter of fact, the most, uh, the most esteemed person, the most esteemed human being mentioned in the Quran is Moses. Amen? You know, now we're in the age of instant, uh, instant uh, confirmation and, 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 you know, you can take your phone out and you can go to a, 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 an encyclopedia, amen, and you can check the facts, you know. Uh, you know, just look up uh, Moses in the Quran, amen. And you'll see that there's no human being that ever lived 
that is mentioned more in the Quran than Moses. And the Egyptians today are predominantly Muslims. The Quran is their holy book. And their holy book tells them that it really happened. Amen? So nothing like this had ever happened. God performed a great miraculous deliverance for the children of Israel. And as they were walking out of town, they were walking in the blessing. Amen? As they were walking, amen, uh, out into the wilderness, they were walking in the blessing. And then as they walked through the Red Sea, amen, they knew they was walking in the blessing then. <laughs> God performed that miracle. You know, this, this was, uh, you know, the 11th miracle, amen. He parted the Red Sea. And I often think about that and I say that if I had been one of those Israelites that were crossing that Red Sea, I would have been amazed and marveling at the fact that I'm walking on dry ground. I would have been telling my neighbor, this is the ground. The ground is dry. Amen. And the Bible takes note of that fact and said that God brought them out and they walked across on dry land, dry ground. Amen. Praise the Lord. But the mistake the children of Israel made as they were walking in their deliverance, as they were enjoying their salvation, amen, the, 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 the many prayers of many people were being answered all at once. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now they're walking out of town. Now they're walking through the Red Sea. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you know, the children of Israel lapsed back into an attitude of grumbling, murmuring, and complaining. Amen. This salvation that we have is the greatest thing that's ever happened to you. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Amen. If you're really saved, you know that what the Lord did for you on that day or that night at that place, wherever it was, that is, the, that is, the, that is the, the greatest thing that ever happened to you. It changed you. It made you a new person. Amen. And some of us, the Lord had to rescue us from evil spirits and demons. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And if you know that you were being influenced by evil spirits and you know that God rescued you from evil spirits amen praise God amen you rejoice all the more that God rebuked the forces of darkness amen and rescued me so now every day as you go through your life you're walking in your salvation you're walking in your deliverance. You're walking in your blessing. Amen. And God is with you. God said, I'll never leave you and I'll never, never forsake you. You know God is with you because on that day that you got saved, God revealed himself to you in the most profound way that you can't forget. Amen. So we don't want to be a people that murmur and complain because we know that we serve the God who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think. We know that there's nothing too hard for the God. We serve the most high God, the almighty God, the king, ruler, and creator of the universe. Amen. And he has allowed us to call him friend. He said, I call you friends. Amen. Not only are we his children, but he said, I call you friend. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Coming from where we come from, we were lost and, and now we're found. We were blind, now we see. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are walking in this blessing. And we know that the Most High God is real, 
He's almighty. There's none above him. Amen. Uh, there's no, no one that can have a greater hold on your life. Amen. Nobody can uh, uh, intervene and come between the relationship with you and your Lord. Amen. So everything in my life, I give God thanks for. Some blessings may come through the municipality. Some may come through the government. You know, but I give thanks to God. Amen. I, I, know, I know that he is the source. Amen. And when times get tough and, you know, I don't have much of anything, going through the time of, you know, a time of difficulty. Amen. That's the will of God, too. So I'm not going to complain against my employer. I'm not going to complain against the mayor. Amen. The governor, the president. Amen. The white man, the black man. I'm not going to complain about people because people don't impact my life. God holds me up. Amen. So when things are going rough, the Bible says that we ought to be able to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. We have to endure hardness. Amen. You ever notice that you, you never see the Apostle Paul complaining in the scriptures, even when he was in jail? You remember Paul and Silas had been whipped before they were put in jail in Philippi. Amen? They had been whipped. Amen? When they whipped people, they, they, they peeled their top half down to the bare back. And then they were thrown in jail. And the Bible says, after being whipped, at midnight, Paul and Silas, they didn't have a devotional leader to pump them up. Amen? At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they did something else. Sang praises. They began to worship. I'm sure their backs were bloody. Amen? I'm sure the dungeon, dungeon was dirty. Amen? Praise the Lord. I'm sure that there was much to be uh, complaining about, about their new little temporary quarters. Amen. Praise the Lord. If they wanted to complain, they could have found a lot to complain about. They would have said, Lord, we've been doing your work. We've been working hard, you know, laboring. We've been praying. We've been fasting. Amen. And you let this happen to us. You know, see, Thanksgiving is a choice. Praise is a choice. You, you set your mind. You make up your mind. You determine that God is in control. And if God allowed this to happen, I'm going to keep praising God. Amen. The Apostle Paul said, nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. And I'm, I'm striving to get to that place. I'm striving to be be like the apostles. Amen. Paul said, nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Paul was not only whipped. And imprisoned. But Paul, like Jesus and probably Peter, you know, the folk that lived before us, they lived hard. We, we have it better than everybody that came before us. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, uh, it's a scripture. I'm going to read this scripture to you. Over in, over in, um, over in 2 Timothy. I want you to see something. In 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, Uh, let's start at verse 5. 2 Timothy 4th chapter, verse 5. He says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. 
Amen? Endure afflictions. Praise the Lord. That's what Christians today ought to, ought to keep in mind. You know, uh, the Bible tells us that, you know, uh, as good soldiers of Jesus Christ, we have to be able to endure hardness. Trouble and hard times are going to come. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to be persecuted. Yes. Amen. Yes, God will allow you to be persecuted. Amen. And so Paul writes here and says, Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. Paul, knew, Paul wrote 2 Timothy from prison, uh, awaiting his ex execution. He was about to be martyred. Amen? Same with Peter. 2 Peter, Peter wrote because he was waiting to be martyred. Amen? Now, now Paul knows that the, the sentence of death has already been pronounced on him. Amen? He's in jail. He's waiting for the executioner to come and, and lead him out. Amen? But he's still taking time to write and try to encourage the saints. Amen? And he says, for I am now, verse 6, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Amen. I fought a good fight. Hallelujah. That's what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to say, I've done my best. I've given him my all. Amen. I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's a, that's a big statement. I have kept the faith because Paul had seen many people along the way lose the faith. Amen. Matter of fact, in this same chapter, he talks about one of his one of his disciples. Amen. That that departed from him down in verse nine. A verse. Let, let me just read nine and ten. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas hath forsaken me having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica. Amen? Now here's the part I want you to see. I want you to see this. Verse 13. He tells Tychicus, Amen. Well, he doesn't tell Tychicus, but I think he's making reference to Tychicus. He says, the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. So a cloak is a coat. That, that, that's, that, it was an outer garment. They didn't have coats like we have with sleeves in those days. They, they wore like a cloak or a cape, you know. And it was like a blanket, you know. Uh, and it was their outer garment uh, to keep them warm in wintertime. Amen. So in verse 13, he says, the cloak that I left at Troas and Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee. In other words, he said, he's, he's telling, I don't know whether he's telling that to, to Tychicus or who he's telling, but he's telling one of his disciples, uh, remember the coat that you always saw me wear? It indicates that, that Paul had one coat. Amen. He didn't say bring me one. He didn't say go to, go to my tent or go to my, my house and get one of my coats amen he said the coat the coat amen the cloak that i left at troas with carpus when thou comest bring with thee he said bring my coat amen praise the lord if that was one of us we would person would be writing back to us and say which one in which closet is it in Amen. Gives you uh, insight into how the early saints and the apostles, amen, put the gospel first and were not concerned about the things of this life. You know, we are, we are overloaded with goodies in, in the time we live in, you know. Uh, we have all kinds of... Been, listen, we are in love with our stuff. We got some nice stuff. Amen. Uh, we're living in a, a time of, of plenty. Nothing wrong with, you know, listen, I'm embarrassed about the stuff that the, that the Lord has blessed me and Christine with, you know, the stuff in our house, you know. 
But I thank God for my wife, Christine. She does a wonderful thing. I think it'd be a good uh, example for many people. Amen. She constantly uh, keeps in touch with these charitable organizations and they come regularly to our house. Instead of us saving up all this stuff, you're saving stuff that you're never going to use again. Amen. And it's taking up room. Amen. It's filling up your drawers. You can't get your new stuff in because you don't want to let go of your old stuff. Amen. We got so much stuff. And we love it. We don't want nobody bothering us. You know, somebody might look in your drawer and say, you know, this has been in here for 15 years. Why don't you just get rid of it? Oh, no, 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 no. That's precious to you. We love our stuff. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But you know what's going to happen to all that wonderful stuff you have? All that wonderful junk that you have? Amen. They're going to have a wake at your house. We don't have traditional wakes, but we all gather at the house of the deceased. And somebody's going to say, you know, we're going to have to get a dumpster. <laughs> We're going to have to get a dumpster and put it outside so we can clean out this place. Because that stuff that is precious to you, that you holding on to, amen, that's not going to be precious to your children. First of all, it's going to be out of style. It's not their style. Amen. And you may have paid a lot of money for it. Amen. And we just love all of our stuff. Amen. But the apostles traveled light. Amen. Jesus traveled, traveled light. Jesus didn't have a house. Jesus didn't have a donkey. Jesus didn't have any possessions. Amen. And Paul, who was called into the ministry by Jesus personally. Amen. Praise the Lord. I see my, my son uh, coming out. <laughs> Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. Because I want to, you know, but, um, you know, we see, we see Paul is making it clear that he only had one coat. Amen? And he said, bring it. But then notice what else he says. Down in verse, in verse uh, 20, one, he says, do thy diligence to come before winter. Bring my coat and try to get here before winter. Amen? He only had one coat. Winter was coming. Amen? He told one of his disciples, get that coat that I left. Because... He was in jail and he didn't have no coat. And the jails then were not heated, like a heated place like what we have now. Amen. They didn't have windows, they just had bars. So that meant in the wintertime it was cool inside there. Amen. And Paul said, winter's coming. Bring my coat and try to get here before winter. Amen. But we are distracted by the abundance of things that we have. Amen? But we don't want to be like the children of Israel, and that's why, because we have been so pampered and so blessed, amen? Like I said, we're blessed more than uh, all the saints that came before us, all of your family that lived before, all your ancestors, none of them enjoyed the kind of benefits and blessings and, and luxury, amen, that we do. None of the conveniences. They didn't have microwave. They didn't have indoor plumbing. Amen? They didn't have running water inside the house. That's why the woman at the well came up to the well early in the morning, amen, but after Jesus uh, made her to know that you're talking to the Messiah. Amen? 
He told her, if you knew who it is that asked you to give him a drink, you would ask him to give you a drink. And he would give you water that would spring up in, to, in you unto everlasting life. And she said, Lord, give me some of this water so I won't have to keep coming to this well. And the Bible says that she ran away and left her water pot. She was so excited because, because she knew that this is the Messiah. She said, she told Jesus, she said, when the Messiah comes, he's going to tell us all things. And Jesus began to tell her everything about herself. And she began to realize that this was the Messiah. And when Jesus said, if you knew who it was that was talking to you, she was getting the message then. She said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This kid, is this the Messiah? Then she just took off, went into town, and became the first evangelist in the New Testament. Amen? She went and evangelized her town. She said, come see a man that told me everything I ever did. Is this not the Messiah? Amen. She came and, and, and was a witness for Christ. Amen. But see, that's the way it was in those days. Women had to go out and go up to the well to get water. Amen. Down, all the way down through the centuries. Amen. Now we got indoor plumbing and water, uh, hot water. Amen. When I was a young, I thank God that I can remember when we didn't have all the things that we have today. Amen. I, when I was a young child, we did not have hot running water in the house. Amen. I used to get beatings. My mother used to beat me. Because it was just something in me. I, I think it might have been a good thing in me. I knew something was wrong with me having to get washed in the same water that my three sisters got washed in before me. And so when it was time for them to get me up and get me washed, I used to hide, run, fight. I didn't know what was wrong with me, but when I would go down and look at that basin of water, that cloudy basin, I couldn't do it. And I would fight. And my mother said, Negro, I'm going to have to kill you. Amen. And, you know, that's the way it was for everybody. In we used to have to take a bucket of water, heat it up on the stove, and then take that bucket and pour it into maybe one or two. We didn't ever have more than two basins. And others had to wait their turn, and they had to step up and use the water that somebody else used too. Amen. <laughs> now, some of y'all think I'm crazy, but this is the truth. I mean, you know. So when I think where the Lord has brought me from over the years, listen, when I go and turn on, turn on the, 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 the faucet and hot water comes out, I'm still thanking God that he's brought me this far. Amen. Thank God for hard times. Thank God for those tough times. Amen. We didn't have automatic heat. Amen. We had a wood-burning stove in the basement that came up through the floor in a great big, uh, I guess it was about 36 by 36, vent. That one vent heated the whole house. Amen. But somebody had to keep Tending that fire, had to go down and stoke the, stoke the ashes, and or sometimes put more coal on the fire, amen. But now we're living in an age where everybody's got it made, everybody's got everything. People complain, amen. I was watching uh, the, 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 uh, the new home, the, what's the name of the new home thing that comes on television. Um, What's the name of any any one of those shows that uh, Home and Garden, something like that. And the people were complaining because it only had a two car garage. And I said, you know, when I came up on Harmony Street, there was only one person on Harmony Street that even had a car. And now people complaining because a two car garage ain't enough. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But you know, thank God for the hard times. Amen. The hard times, you know, will, will 
get us ready. Amen. Be because, you know, hard times are coming back. I know hard times is out of style now, but we've been talking about the, the uh, end time, and, and, and Jesus wants the church to be ready. He said, you know, that, that we should endure hardness as good soldiers. Amen. We need to toughen ourselves up. Amen. Uh, because Paul said, nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. He said, because I'm not worried about things. The Bible says that the uh, riches and, and uh, the, 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 the uh, things of this world can choke the word and cause us to become unfruitful. So that's why Paul wrote and said that nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Stop complaining, amen, about little things when you've got so many blessings. You're walking in the blessings of God. God is with you. He's watched you, over you. He's brought you this far. Every blessing that you have, God gave it to you. And if, if there's a pause in the blessings, don't start poking out. Amen. Be able to endure hardness. Be able to go through something. Amen. Even a little persecution. Paul said endure affliction. Amen. You know why we celebrate Thanksgiving? Because the Christians that were driven out of England and went up into the Netherlands and then they had to leave the Netherlands and they were driven out because of religious persecution. Amen. They were preachers. They didn't want to go by the Catholic teachings. They wanted to go by the word of God so they became street preachers. And they became, either they were going to be banned from England or thrown in jail. And they fled from England. And they wound up coming to this country. We call them pilgrims today. The pilgrims came to America. And you know why? They were the first ones to celebrate Thanksgiving. Because they were on a trip that if you went on, you would think you was having a nightmare. Amen. Amen. They, they went on a trip across the ocean. This was to, in that time, it was like a trip out into outer space. They braved going across the ocean. They had to share everything. They didn't have no privacy. Amen. They had bedpans and that, uh, you know, no privacy. You, you might have bedpan, but that, you still hear noise all over the place. Amen. Amen. And smell. You had noise and smell. They had a sheet up for privacy between families. Each family had a bedpan. Amen? They have other names for them. What's the other names? Well, bedpans. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Chamber pot. Amen? And they had to ration water. They had to take enough water. They, they didn't know how long it was going to take, but it took over 60 days. So they had to ration water. Amen? They went on an arduous trip. And when they reached their destination in the new world, amen, they didn't have no house. They were thanking God that they made it to the new land. And after one winter of trying to build houses, trying to give themselves a place to, uh, 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 of shelter, amen, when they made it through that first winter, then they had the first Thanksgiving. And they gathered to thank God that they made it to the, the new land and that they survived the winter. Amen? And they had it, the first Thanksgiving. They gathered to give thanks. But you know what? That wasn't the first Thanksgiving. That was just the first Thanksgiving service. When they landed... In America, amen, they made a pact and they gave thanks to God and they made a commitment to spread the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we don't want to be like the children of Israel, walking in God's blessings. God delivered them, brought them out, just like God brought the pilgrims out of Europe where they were being persecuted and they came to a land where they weren't persecuted anymore. Well, God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt 
where they were in bondage. Now they were out in the wilderness. God opened the Red Sea. God was blessing. They saw God, the God of the universe was with them. They saw it. He demonstrated to them that I'm with you. Amen. They had a reminder every night that God is with them, that pillar of fire. They saw that pillar. You know, I don't think nobody spoke in tongues back then, but I think if I had been there, I would have been speaking in some kind of tongues every night, looking at that pillar of fire and seeing a cloud, a pillar of a cloud every day. God was reminding them every day, I'm with you. I'm with you every day. Amen. And as they walked in this blessing, been delivered from 400 years of bondage, God is, is showing that he's with them with his miraculous power. He opened the Red Sea. They are seeing that God is with them. Amen. But you know what they did? They murmured and they murmured and they complained. And, you know, they, when, when times got hard, they act like they never had it hard before. Amen. We're tired of this old light bread. God was giving them miraculous food. Manna. Amen. Every day at dinner time, every day at breakfast time, God gave them manna. Amen. But they compl complained and murmured. In other words, you know what murmuring is? Sometimes you, sometimes you don't, you don't want to launch a full complaint. Amen. Sometimes you just say, yeah, yeah. manna again. We got manna. When are we going to get a different diet? That's, that's murmuring. That's complaining. See, when you complain on your job because somebody, you know, you like the job you had, and they said, well, we need you over here now. Well, no, this is my... And you start complaining. Amen. You don't want to complain too much because you don't want to lose your job. So you go around murmuring. Amen. But as children of God that are walking with God, and you know that God has brought you out, God has saved you, he brought you out of darkness into the light. God is with you every day. God is blessing you. And whatever progress you've made, whatever benefits you have, God gave them to you. No matter, no matter who he used to bring it to you, it came from God. Amen. So every day you ought to be giving God the praise. Amen. And when you, look, when you have a little season of difficulty, thank God even in the midst of your difficulty. That's why Paul said, and I'll close with this, amen. Paul said, nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. That's in, that's in eighth, let's read it together as we close. In eighth chapter of, uh, of Romans. And verse 35, this is having a grateful attitude towards God. And you're saying no hard times, no trouble, no tribulation is going to separate me from the love of God. Verse, excuse me, uh, verse uh, 35. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Somebody say amen. Or distress. Amen. You might be saved, but you're still going to have distress. You might be saved, but you're still going to have tribulation. Tribulation doesn't mean God don't love you. Tribulation doesn't mean that you're not living right. Amen. And the reason Paul could say that was because he said, I'm going to have the right attitude even when I'm going through tribulation, even when I'm going through distress. Amen. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution? Well, saints, we ain't ready for that yet. Let's tell the truth. Amen. We're not ready to handle no real persecution. So we better just keep praying. Amen. Keep building yourself up because, listen, We've been studying about the, the last times, the tribulation period. And the tribulation period, many Christians get it wrong. They think that the tribulation period means a time when the saints is going to be, you know, persecuted. No, the saints are going to be persecuted, but the tribulation is a tribulation for the whole world. The whole world is going to be in tribulation. 
Amen? And the Bible says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And yes, there will be persecution of Christians during that time because there's going to be, you know, uh, uh, fights within families, the Bible says. Amen? It says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution and holy Jesus? Famine. You think you can handle a famine? Amen? We've got to change our mindset. Paul said, famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. But you notice he said, nay, in all these things. Amen? In the time of tribulation, in the time of distress, in the time of persecution. Amen? Even in the time of lack or want or famine. Amen? You can't dictate the terms of your relationship with the Lord. Amen? Be like Paul. Paul said, no matter what happens, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reflect love for my Savior. I'm going to reflect love for God. Amen? Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Amen? That's how they conquered the Roman Empire. Amen? They were killed all the day long. Amen? But the Christians prevailed. Amen. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Settle it in your hearts, saints. Make up your mind. Amen. For Christ I'll live. For Christ I'll die. Amen. Like that song we used to sing, I'm going through, I'm going through, I'll pay the price no matter what others do. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. We want an attitude of thanksgiving at all times. Don't blame your boss, don't blame your coworker, don't blame the white man, don't blame the black man. Sometimes we get pretty mad at the black folk. Amen? Sometimes the black folk can create stress for us. Amen? But don't blame nobody. Amen? Don't blame the black man. Don't blame the white man. Don't blame the Republicans. Don't blame the Democrats. Amen? Don't blame the White House. Don't blame the Little House. Or the <laughs> Amen? Don't blame nobody for nothing. Whatever comes, you just go through it right. With the right attitude that you give thanks to God for all things. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's all stand on our feet. Neither murmur ye. Murmuring got the children of Israel in a lot of trouble. Murmuring is a bad thing. As a Christian, you need to know that. Murmuring is a bad thing. It got the children of Israel in a lot of trouble. You know, only two adults that left Egypt ever made it to the promised land. Just two adults. Because of their murmuring. Amen? The Bible says that they fell in the wilderness because of their murmuring, because they displeased, they angered God. Amen? For 40 years, they murmured and complained and whined. Amen. And God said, these folk that I brought out of Egypt, not going into the promised land. Amen. Shortly after they came out of Egypt, when, they was going, when God told them, send some spies in to spy out the land. And Caleb and Joshua were among the spies. And, you know, they saw giants in the land. They saw you know, problems. They say, oh, we, we can't beat these guys. Amen. When they came back, everybody gave a bad report. But Caleb and Joshua said, no, no, no. The Lord is with us. Amen. And we are well able to overtake them. Amen. They had a right attitude. 
And those two who had that attitude in the face of great obstacles and challenges, amen, they saw giants. They said, this is a land of giants. We came to the wrong place. God has set us up for an ambush. That's what, when you complain, you're saying God didn't do it right. When you complain, you're saying God is not in charge. These things is overwhelming me and God is letting it happen. Amen. When you complain, you're complaining against God. When you murmur, you're murmuring against God. Amen. We're going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for thanksgiving. And we thank you, Lord, for saints that have thanksgiving in their heart. And Lord, we ask that you would cause us to continuously and perpetually to serve you with a heart filled with thanksgiving. We want to thank you at all times for all things. Lord, we're going to thank you for the good times and for the bad times. Lord, we're going to let our mouths be filled with your praise. We will bless the Lord at all times. Your praise shall continually be in our mouth. Lord God, I pray that you bring us to that place. Help us, Lord, to get to that place. A person with a thankful heart filled with gratitude is a victorious person, is a happy person, a joyful person, a person with a good spirit. Lord God, we want to reflect the goodness of God. I ask it in Jesus' name. Bless my brothers and sisters, Lord. Bless those that are absent, not present with us here in this building. But Lord, we are together in spirit. Lord, help bring us closer to you. We don't know what the future holds in America. We don't know what the future holds in these times we're living in. People, many people, Lord God, are complaining because of COVID-19. Many people are complaining because of the year 2020. We don't know what's going to happen next in 2020. Lord, we don't know what's going to happen in 2021. We don't know what's going to happen in 2022, but we do know, Lord, that we are living in perilous times. And you said in the last days, perilous times shall come. We know we are living in that time. Help us, Lord God, to build ourselves up in faith so that we can be like your servants who were able to face every challenge with a joyful heart. We ask it in Jesus' name and our heart says amen. Now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and present you from now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and present you before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God who is our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now, henceforth, and forever, world without end. Let the church say amen and amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just a little while longer, want to pray. Can get you off of my soul, can to say thank you, Lord. Just for loving me. All right. Many times I do forget. Every need that you have met Oh, thank you, Lord I know you're showing me Ooh. You are there when I am down and out You're holding me Your love is so amazing Oh, it would change me Say, So here I am With all I have I raise my hand to worship you I want to say thank you Thank you Lord Oh thank you For everything For who you are You cover me You touch my heart I want to say thank you I could have died sin but you saved me Didn't have any hope at all You gave me 
I'm not afraid to